Thank you for visiting You Grow Row. If this is your first time, I hope you'll consider subscribing at the end of this video. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you. Today, I'm gonna to be trying a new recipe from my new book, Fermented Vegetables. And the recipe is called Celery Stuffing. Um, I like fermented foods quite a bit and any way I can get some more vegetables into my body sounds like a good idea to me. I do love the flavor of celery as well, but I'm not a fan of like the celery and what is it? Um, peanut butter and that type of thing. I just don't get a lot of celery at all, really, to be honest. I use it in soups a lot, but that's really about it. Maybe chicken salad or tuna salad, something like that which I don't make as often as I used to anymore. At any rate, it says here about this celery stuffing. This bready name seems ridiculous for a vegetable ferment, but you'll be surprised. It's not a relish, a kraut, a kimchi, a pickle, or a paste. It is, though, a substantial presence in the mouth, and the thyme and sage suggest a turkey dinner. Whether you call it stuffing or dressing, this can be a gluten-free option to stuff poultry or to eat alongside as a dressing. I just know this is gonna be so delicious. I just know it. If you've never made your own celery salt, you should consider it. It's really easy and it's so much better than the stuff at the store. I know, I know, that's what we gardeners say about everything. But it's true. <laughs> All right. And let's see. The sage. I've gotten a lot of good use out of my sage this summer. I grow it every year. And usually I wind up just uh, dehydrating it and using it, you know, as a dried herb. But this year, I made a sage vinegar. I used it in some, what did I can? Oh, I think it was a tarragon and sage chicken. Um, now I'm using it in this. gotten a lot of use out of my uh, sage this year. Fresh, you know, as opposed to using it dried only. I saw a recipe recently for a sage jam, but I don't know. Sage is such a strong flavor. I told myself I could make it because I certainly have enough plants out there that I probably could. Still currently talking myself into it, so don't don't count on seeing a video on that. <laughs> All right. The recipe calls for let's see unrefined sea salt. So I'm using some Redmond Real Salt. It's mined right here in the US. It's pretty good too. It's still got like all these. I not pay attention to what I'm doing. Hold on. So it's mined right here in America that Redmond Real salt. 
uh, I think it's Utah, Redmond, Utah, where they nine this at. Oh, let's, uh, let's chop this up a little bit. Super tasty. And it doesn't taste much like any other salt you've ever had. So I'm just massaging that salt into the celery here, including the leaves, which there weren't many of them. on the celery that I bought. Celery leaves, which have the taste of celery as well. Very nice to add to soups, salads, whatever you got. Dry them up like an herb, like. So let's see, they say it's supposed to be salty, but not overly salty. Okay, I'll be the judge of that. Yep. I'm sure, yeah. I think she thought it was. All right, I'm just gonna cover this up and set it aside for a short while. Come back and pack it. Ooh. Looking good already. vegetables Ooh. and the recipe is on page 159 and it's called celery stuffing <laughs> <laughs>